Good afternoon to you. Mark Saddle, HurricaneTrack.com here Monday now, the 18th of September, 2023. On the update today, we're going to take a look at how the season has gone so far. Pretty busy. Yes, despite the El Nino, we'll take a look at some stats related to that. Then sea surface temperature anomalies. Where has the heat been removed from not the tropics, actually, but the subtropics? I'll show you that. And then we'll move into current conditions and see what's brewing out there. The busy September looks like it's going to continue. And, of course, we will talk about that yellow area off the southeast coast of the United States. I've got a really interesting thread uh, and set of posts. I guess that's what a thread is over from Storm 2K. And then we'll wrap things up and we'll call it a day. All right. Good to have you along with me as we start this week out Monday here. Let's get going over at the Colorado State University site here. This is created by Dr. Phil Klotzbach and his colleagues. And this gives us a good box score of what is happening. He's a big baseball fan, by the way, and statistics related to such. Looking at the Atlantic, we've had 15 name storms, including the one in January that didn't get a name. It should have. It was subtropical. Don't worry about it. We're at 15, and we've had six hurricanes, and we have had three major hurricanes and the ace right now. 108, well above where we should be already by this time of year. All the other metrics are also above normal, and we still have Nigel out there. That's going to keep cranking up the ACE score. And, of course, the ACE, in case you're new and you just tuned into my videos for the first time, accumulated cyclone energy, that's the amount of wind energy that is output from tropical cyclones. It's a good metric to sort of gauge the quality of a season because you could have a whole bunch of named storms that only lasted a couple of days that were very weak, and and lasted a couple of days they could do both and then you have a low ACE score meaning that the overall quality of storms despite the numbers of named storms just wasn't there this year we've had six hurricanes and they have been long lasting and very powerful think about Lee that we just had Franklin before that so we have an ACE now of 108 I think we have a shot of cracking 200 before all is said and done. It just kind of seems that we might be heading that way. We've still got 92 points to go. We'll see if I'm right about that. All right, looking at the satellite animation here this afternoon, uh, let's use red over here to make this pop better. There's Nigel, probably gonna become a major hurricane. And we'll put a four in here because I think it, if it does, it'll be the fourth major hurricane this year, and that is really hard to do during an El Nino. Notice, though, that it is in the subtropics, or close to it anyway. It's not in the deep tropics. We normally think of the deep tropics as anything south of 20 degrees latitude. It's almost up into the subtropics up here. And that's interesting because we're just not getting the really deep, sustained development down south. And part of that is related to the El Nino. And that's a little bit longer of a conversation that we can have later. Or at least I'll tell you about a conversation, I guess, is when it's both ways, right? But sometimes you probably talk back to me through these videos. I bet you do. But yes, uh, the fact that we're getting these systems strengthening up here in the higher latitudes. Now, certainly Lee was pretty strong down here, yes. But I just think it's interesting to note that we're not having deep tropical development and these storms are not coming all the way across and doing something like that because partially the El Nino creating a different kind of pattern that means these systems generally stay out in the open Atlantic for the most part. Now certainly Lee impacted areas up here and Idalia of course was over here but that started over in this area from a system that was not a tropical wave. See I'm already getting too complicated with it but that's what we got. We got this area nothing over here just yet but we got to watch that and then we do have energy that's going to be coming off Africa that's going to try to develop. And look at this low-pressure area up here, non-tropical. But boy, it's bringing some very heavy rain into parts of New England. And the wet summer, it's still summer for a couple more days anyway, uh, continues up there. So freshwater flooding is going to be a problem. Pay attention to that. You've seen the videos probably all summer long of people getting stuck in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, elsewhere. And our partner, Quick Dam, they're in Rhode Island. They're up at Pawtucket. And they're probably going to be having a lot of product needed to be used in the coming days from this system and potentially 
the next system coming up, we'll talk about that as we go forward here, something that might try to brew off the southeast coast. But yeah, lots of freshwater flooding uh, from these very high precipitable water values in the atmosphere, meaning that the atmosphere is just very juiced right now. So just pay attention to that if you are up in New England. It's happening now, so hopefully you are already paying attention. All right. Moving on along, let's look at the water temperatures. Now, this is really interesting to me. We started out the season with everything over here. Let's use black to make it just contrast better. Everything over here was really, really warm compared to average. We had the El Nino that was coming on. Now, several months into the season, and you know, basically mid-September, the El Nino is still here. It has expanded westward. And it's a strong El Nino, no doubt, but it has not had the influence on just completely shutting down the Atlantic season that one would expect. So as a result, we've got these traces here, these leftover areas. Look how Lee, it didn't skip the Gulf Stream, but the Gulf Stream is really hard to disrupt there. I just think that's really neat. But we have Lee and Franklin that have carved out an area of below average temperatures, mainly in the subtropics up here. This is occurring because of Nigel, and uh, we don't really have much left over here um, of a cold wake from Idalia, and that is what I want to point your attention to, that yes, we have removed some of the heat out of, again, not really the tropics, because the tropics down here and then into the Gulf, you're still looking at very, very warm water temperatures relative to average. The anomalies are still high two to three degrees Celsius in some situations and we have to watch and see what happens. Not so much anything coming from the east because we just don't have enough ridging so far to get anything to come all the way across. But these tropical waves that do come off and then they might not develop out here and they sort of stay low so to speak, they might try to develop over in this area later on as we end September, get into October that's what we have to be watching for. We're not done yet, okay? I talked about this the other day. Climatologically speaking, we do have another peak that comes at the first couple of weeks of October. And until we get these strong cold fronts to come down out of the nation's midsection here and really scour out the Gulf and the Northern Caribbean, bringing dry air in there, that's the clue, that's the key. We gotta get a lot of dry air to just drain in. Until that happens, the Gulf, the Caribbean, is still very much open for business and we need to be watching that closely in the coming weeks. Nothing to worry about right now, but it is something to keep in mind. All right, especially since the season has been this busy so far. Actual water temperatures, finally, there's the 30 Celsius isotherm. That's starting to just gradually pull away. Still the 30 Celsius, that's so warm. It's like the upper 80s. Uh, but the extreme northern Gulf Coast, quote unquote, starting to cool off a little bit. Still have a huge area of very warm. These are actual temperatures, 31 Celsius. It's interesting how stuff's kind of moved around the Gulf since Idalia. Uh, 31 Celsius still down here around southwest Florida. So just a hypothetical. I know that people are very sensitive, and rightfully so, in southwest Florida from what happened uh, just about a year ago, but if we get something to brew in the Caribbean, which is typical of where we would look once we get to later September through October, and we start to bring these systems north, it is possible, it is mathematically possible that we could still get something, not even mathematically, I mean it's climatologically possible, that's what we would expect, is development in the Caribbean with a northeast track towards the peninsula of Florida. So everybody in the Gulf here Texas is a little bit harder this time of year, late into September through October. It's just the way the pattern is. You can't rule out a Texas impact. But for those of you along Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida, just please understand, you guys should know, but maybe you're new, you just moved there this year or something, and you're not quite sure, hey, is hurricane season over? No, not even close. All right, I mean, we don't know for sure, but climatologically speaking, right? Meanwhile, off of my coast, up here in the mid-Atlantic and elsewhere, water temperature is starting to cool down. There's 26 Celsius, a little, a little too cool for me. I like water temperatures in the mid-80s, or about 28, 29 Celsius, something like that. That kind of water temperature profile still offshore. 
And this will be very important with what's coming related to our system off the southeast coast that is highlighted not on the two-day outlook, but the seven-day tropical weather outlook. There it is, 30% chance of development. We'll hone in on this a little bit more in just a moment. And then we've got this next disturbance that's going to come off Africa in a few days. It will likely develop, and it will likely stay out somewhere in this zone. It's just the way the pattern is. We don't have a strong, big old Bermuda Azores high sitting up here, steering everything all the way over to the west. That is not prevalent this year. And so we'll have a bunch of big ace producers with limited impact to land. But again, just to reemphasize, we do have to watch this area once we get to the latter part of September and through the month of October to be sure. All right. So what do we got? Well, this is a really good tool. We use it a lot to try to figure out where we need to be looking for things. And it's going to be this area right down here. There's a lot of energy. This is your vorticity signature. All stretched out. This is part of that sort of kind of nor'easter deal that's headed up to New England right now and off the mid-Atlantic states. But this area right here is where we're going to need to watch in the coming days. So on tomorrow's update, Wednesday's update, so forth and so on, yes, we will be watching here to see what happens. Now you're going to see in here the term subtropical, non-tropical, meaning it gets its kick not from a heat source, a uh, tropical wave coming in with a bunch of energy with it, but more of the atmosphere with cold air and energy creating a surface low. That's the bottom line. We're going to get a surface low over very warm water. I just showed you that. Water temperatures in the mid to upper 80s. And if the system stays offshore long enough, it could start to develop, and here's the key word, more, or several words, Convection is the word, and then more deep convection around it. The more deep convection this system can form, in other words, thunderstorms, then it could sort of resemble more of a tropical system. Now look, this is all just scientific classification stuff. Labels. We hadn't used that word a lot this year, but labels. These are just what mankind labels things. For you, wind, rough seas, periods of heavy rain, bands of heavy rain, whatever the case may be, that's what's going to be coming potentially for northern Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, and eventually possibly the mid-Atlantic and New England. We're not quite sure yet because nothing has formed and the models are trying to figure things out. But impacts wise, kind of a hybrid system between tropical and non-tropical, but again, you just need to think of it as uh, potentially impactful, especially for small craft any kind of a hurricane threat, I don't see it, but it is not impossible. You never know for sure. Just 36 hours with the right conditions, even over a small area, and you can have something ramp up pretty quickly. And I'll give you some examples of that as we move forward here. But this will be the area that we're going to be watching right down here as the week progresses. All right, the GFS at that same level of the atmosphere, 5,000 feet or 850 millibars, to look at it from a meteorological perspective. Again, uh, this is the area that we're going to want to watch right down here. Currently, there's your energy that's headed up towards New England. There's Nigel. And then there's you know, some semblance of energy trying to come off of Africa that will develop eventually, unless the system off the coast gets named. The next storm is Ophelia. So let's move this out 24 hours at a time. There's 24. There's 48. Nigel is going around. I mean, you can even see it here. The Azores High, you know, that's it. You don't have any significant ridging over the western Atlantic. So Nigel's just going to go around the backside of the Azores High out here, the Bermuda Azores High, the subtropical ridge, whatever you want to call it. That's 48 hours, finally out to 72. We're just now starting to see the beginnings of a little bit of a weakness down here, like a little surface trough develops. The air is coming in and converging, see it about right here, and it starts to pile up, so we should expect to see showers and thunderstorms down there, kind of a breezy time of it maybe with easterly onshore flow, that kind of thing. Finally, by 96 hours, it begins to take shape a little more, quite literally, and then at 120 hours, five days out, it is trying to come together, but look how everything is spread out, all that energy there, the vorticity signature it is spread out. Now let's back this up 
and go and look at Nigel right here, that's bundled. That's a true hurricane. Tropical in nature, the energy's bundled around a warm core. The next system, and this is a great example of it, this system is spread out. So it is more hybrid in nature. You understand that? Easy to see on this example here. That's day five. Finally, day six. It's inland now over eastern uh, mid-Atlantic states. And then finally, by day seven, it's pretty much gone, so to speak. And you don't really see anything else out there. There's a little bit of a blip in the, uh, the trades down here, a little bit of a vorticity signature there. GFS not real enthused at hour 168. So with anything in the deep tropics, that is, let's take a look at the Euro. And this is out to, this is the EC fast, also 168 hours. And let's see what we got here. These are 24 hour increments and you see what happens. Uh, there's 48, 72, 96, 120. And here's a good example, spread out all that energy spread out over a large area. Could be pretty breezy up here. You could get some coastal flooding issues, times at high tide, that kind of thing. We're going to have to watch this. This could be a big mess. So not a big smack in the face, so to speak, but more of just you know, kind of like somebody just beating up on you for a couple of days. I'm trying to put this into words that you guys can understand. And then, of course, the Euro more enthused with what's coming off Africa then is the GFS. That's day six or five. There's day six day seven and it is interesting that by day seven the euro leaves a piece down here uh, the GFS doesn't it's already gone but then the euro has this the GFS doesn't so we are back to the GFS versus euro whatever you want to call it bottom line the next several days are going to be pretty interesting to watch and see what develops or doesn't develop off the southeast coast and then we may or may not have another system out in the deep tropics my process of thought here is, yes, that we probably will have another name storm in the deep tropics because that's where we have had so much activity so far, and there's no reason really for that to quit just yet. All right, now let me show you this over here at Storm 2K. Um, I love the site. been a member of myself since 03. They are, of course, one of our partners through Patreon, and I just like these different threads that they have, and I was perusing just the general look of everything over here under the talking tropics area. And then this caught my eye. People talking about development off the southeast coast. This is from user Walter White. So we, now we know what Walter's been up to ever since Breaking Bad, right? So it's interesting, just different people talking about the past and how it can help us to understand what's happening now. And in 1984, I remember this very well, Diana formed earlier in September in the same general area that we're watching now. And other people were starting to take note of that. Now, Diana turned into that. I remember this. I was 13 years old, lived up in New Bern, and I was in middle school and was really hooked on the cable weather. What was it? The Weather Channel back then and CNN. It was just like all I could do to uh, just stay up and watch that coverage. Now, nobody is even suggesting, I want to make this very clear, that we're going to get a Diana scenario out of this. But these little areas of weakness that form along the southeast coast over very warm water can lead to sometimes, but rarely, very important, a stronger system than we are anticipating. I don't think we're going to see anything close to what we had with Diana, but I just think it's nice to see that people are recognizing history. And they go on to talk about it, different folks. This is Yakov here um, and uh, some of the patterns that he's showing. And yeah, a couple of the models are a little bit more aggressive. You know, this just goes to show we need to watch this kind of stuff. Larry here, I really like this. He found that seven tropical cyclones that formed from non-tropical origins that later hit the southeast U.S. as a hurricane. Arthur, 2014, I was in the eye of that at Oregon Inlet. Gaston, I was in the eye of that. Diana, 1984, it did start from a non-tropical source. Cindy going way back before my time, 1959, of course, 1935. And then we're going way, 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 way back. But yes, they have happened in the past from non-tropical origins. All right, so just keep that in mind as we go forward, watching what happens. And even uh, Rob Lightbrown here of Crown Weather 
yeah, old Diana there, a lot of us, for me specifically, really helped to get my start in really trying to dig into what are hurricanes all about. I grew up learning about them as a kid. I was a teenager. We had the advent of cable news and weather in the early 80s, and I was hooked. So there you go. That's what I like this. That's a good part of Storm 2K is the way people can sort of, again, recognize things and learn from the past and maybe kind of shine a light on what might happen in the future. Bottom line, that non-tropical area, very little chance it gets really strong, but we do need to watch because it is over very warm water, and we have seen stuff from the past that got stronger than we anticipated. You just never say never. All right. All right. That is it for me for today. As always, thank you for tuning in. And as always, I hope you learned something. I appreciate your time and attention. From all of us here at Hurricane Track, I am Mark Suddeth, and I will talk to you again tomorrow.